What's up resellers? I'm Rebecca and you're watching Rebecca the Reseller. Thanks for joining me today for another video on one of my most very favorite topics and that's money. If you are new here, hi, I'm Rebecca. I am a semi full-time reseller on Poshmark and ThreadUp and I dabble in a few other things and today I'll actually be sharing with you a little bit about each one of them because I'll be sharing with you how much I earned in 2020. I'll be sharing my sales, how much I paid myself, my bonuses, my salary, what each income stream brought in. I I do have several and that's going to include reselling and all of the different platforms it's going to include YouTube affiliate marketing and kind of all of the products that I have under my Rebecca the reseller brand and also going to include my print on demand business which I don't always talk a lot about so if that sounds interesting to you I hope you will watch the entire video I'm gonna share it all I have been loving watching everybody's videos one by one each reselling youtuber has been putting out their end of the year numbers whether they're sharing revenue or profit or how much they paid themselves or how much they earn or their total sales everybody's kind of sharing a little bit of different things I'm gonna to explain to you exactly what I'll be sharing but it's really great I find it very motivational and good to just kind of get an idea of what's possible I definitely see how it can be difficult to you know compare yourself and I definitely don't want you know to put this video out there for anyone to compare with me because this is my story this is my situation my life and my reselling business and it's very personal to my unique situation and so is yours so I do want to kind of just mention that up front hopefully everybody will just kind of watch these videos with an open mind get curious about what everybody is doing what they're earning it's just so wonderful to know that everyone is being open about it and I hope that no one will feel discouraged or compare themselves or judgmental in any way and I really do want to say from the bottom of my heart thank you Thank you and thank you again and again to everyone that has purchased from me on Poshmark, bought a reseller box, bought one of my reselling tools, purchased my course, watched a YouTube video, liked it, subscribed to the channel, followed me on Instagram, like any little thing that you have done to support this channel or the efforts that I put out or my business. Thank you so much. This has been a crazy, crazy year and I have been so grateful and so touched that I have been able to earn money from home when so many people are out there suffering and with a lot of uncertainty in their life I've never I've always been grateful that I can do this from home as a stay-at-home mom but I've never been more grateful than this particular year of 2020 to have been able to significantly contribute to my family's finances to my own finances as a woman to do things for my son and to be a part of this reselling community and so if you have been a part of that with me by again participating in any way with my channel or my Instagram or my Poshmark closet or whatever thank you so much I really do appreciate it okay let's dig in so as far as my gross sales we're gonna get started in the reselling category that's the primary meat of the business right so reselling on Poshmark in my closet which is called on my rack I brought in a gross sale amount of thirty one thousand five hundred and sixty eight dollars Wow, <laughs> like super excited to have done over $30,000 in one year just on Poshmark, just in one closet. I don't have the year over year comparison on this particular number. I have the total year over year comparison, which I'll share with you at the end. Now I do have a second closet and that second Poshmark closet has kind of been a couple of different things. I tried it out as like a curated boutique and that didn't go very well. Then I did like random stuff in there. Then I changed it into reseller boxes and that kind of of did well and that was more in the beginning to the middle of the year and then the pandemic happened I couldn't shop at the bins anymore so I couldn't get things for that low price point to be able to share with people in a reseller box so I had to kind of stop it now that I have a good flow of inventory going I am sharing inventory boxes and I've moved them to that closet so if you've heard me mention my reseller inventory boxes they are now in this closet that's probably where they're going to stay so that Poshmark closet is called at the reseller shop it's link down below and it's gonna have you know it's got my Ikea bags it's got a new with tags box it's got a regular box that's where all like reseller things are going to go and in that closet I did three thousand nine hundred and thirty two dollars so I kind of picked it up I kind of put it down it was always like a side thing in 2021 perhaps I will do more with it but it's always gonna have reseller boxes there as long as I have them available and again I did about four thousand dollars in reseller boxes which I thought was pretty good I get I didn't do the actual total of just Poshmark but so it 
looks like it's just over thir between $35,000 and $36,000 on Poshmark between the two closets. Then thread up was a big part of my year. You guys have followed along perhaps on some of the thread up videos that I've done. I've kind of shared with you pretty much everything that has sold and kind of how that whole journey has been. And thank God for thread up this year because I wouldn't have hit hardly any of these numbers without it because I was homeschooling. There was a pandemic. We couldn't source. We were sending things that like there, it was craziness and chaos. And so I am very grateful for thread up for the purpose that it served. Obviously, there's been tons of changes, and so I don't know that ThreadUp is going to be as big a part of my business going forward into 21. We'll see what happens. But on ThreadUp, I did payouts. So not sales, payouts. That is $9,642.63. So just shy of 10 grand in actual payouts on eBay, which you guys don't know me too much as an eBay seller recently, but in the beginning of the year, I was still selling on eBay. I used to sell everything on Poshmark and eBay. I had everything cross posted to both. I had a virtual assistant. I had a storage unit. I had a lot of different things different about my business. In that very early portion of 2020, I did $669 on eBay. And I think that was in January and that was it and then I decided I'm giving up eBay and that wasn't due to the pandemic it was a lot of eBay craziness managed payments glitches required fields like all this stuff and I was over it and so I broke up with eBay I'll probably go back to it it's like one of those bad relationships but at this point I really basically didn't do eBay the entire year I did do Mercari off and on it's always been an off and on thing for me poor Mercari it's a great little engine that could right like you go on it when you can but when you can't you kind of just shove it to the side at least that's how I treat Mercari but I do think that it's worth it in some way shape or form I actually talk a lot about Mercari oddly enough in my Poshmark boutique course because oddly enough, unbeknownst to me, it was a great place to sell my boutique items, which I thought was very funny. So anyway, I did $1,495 on Mercari in 2020, and that was very much a start and stop. And really into the pandemic, kind of like midway through the year, I had to let it go because I just couldn't keep up with it. So it was really more the beginning half of the year that I did that amount. The next category that I still consider reselling, though it's not online, is selling to buy, sell trade stores like a Style Encore, people have Buffalo Exchange and like so many other things that I don't know we don't have a oh, clothes mentor there's all those kinds of stores Plato's Closet I don't typically do well with Plato's Closet mostly I'm a style encore seller and I did $2,587.98 at buy sell trade stores I couldn't believe it was that much I thought that was fantastic I really use that money as a great cash flow liquidation option you know when you have things that you need to get rid of that haven't sold you know you can take them there or items that you don't really want to sell in your Poshmark closet but you know that there's value there you can take them to a buy sell trade store and do a quick little flip so I definitely think that I may do more with that in 2021 I'm still kind of formulating what options there are though I'm also looking at doing a lot of trades with buy sell trade store I've really started looking at it more of a sourcing option than just a selling option so more to come with buy sell trade stores from me so the last two portions of reselling are Facebook and Instagram and these are not areas that I typically focus on but I do put lots up on Facebook or random items up on Facebook from time to time or people contact me locally because of some of the outreach that I've done locally in the past so I did $841 in sales on Facebook and $50 in sales on Instagram so to total up all of the reselling revenue that I made, $50,786. So 50K <laughs> in the year in gross sales, in reselling, really happy with that. And I will tell you at the end, kind of the percentage breakdown of how much that reselling is as part of my overall business. Now we're gonna get into some of the other income streams that I have that you may be curious about. So real quick, because it's the smallest little one to talk about, is print on demand. And I mention this from time to time, but that's basically when, you have a design for something and you put it on a platform and then a customer goes and purchases that item with your design and the platform sends it out for you. So I have t-shirts that I design and they are on Amazon and when someone purchases it from Amazon, 
Amazon will print the shirt with my design and send it out to the customer. I don't have to keep any shirts. I don't have any screen printing. I don't do really anything, but I do get a royalty for that design that that person purchased. And then I also have Etsy where I have a print on demand shop as well. And so those two are things, it's kind of like when you hear people talk about Amazon FBA, they don't like to talk about it. They don't want to share anything. It's kind of like that because if I start talking about the designs I have or different things that I do with it, it could really hurt that market for me. So all I'm going to do is tell you I have money that I've made on merch by Amazon, which at this point has been basically completely passive. I may have put up 10 designs this year in the entire year. Most of all of the money that I'm making are from designs that I put up in prior years that just keep continuing to sell and I just get the royalties from it, which is, I can't even tell you how wonderful that was this year. There was a slight disruption, which was a very good lesson for me to learn. During the height of the pandemic, they actually halted all production for merch by Amazon and didn't make any shirts. They took all the listings down temporarily so that Amazon could focus on getting essentials out to people that were stuck at home or staying at home and couldn't get the things that they needed. I totally understand that, but I did lose out on one entire month of sales because they had to shut it down and there, so there were no sales on merch by Amazon for me. So given all of that, I'm still very grateful for this and I would love to give more attention to it in 2021 if I'm able. And in that year, I brought in $6,291.16 of basically passive income from merch by Amazon. So grateful for that. Then on Etsy, from my small little Etsy shop, not the one that you guys know, it's a completely different store, was $3,543. And that is a, like merch by Amazon or royalties that I get. So that's all profit. Etsy, that's sales, and then I have expenses for the items. So that total number is actually has a, a significant amount of expenses to it. Either way, print on demand, that portion of my business brought in $9,834, almost $10,000 from basically passive income through t-shirts and things like that. So again, really grateful for having built that in prior years. I started print on demand in 2017 and all of that just kind of continued to snowball. And here in 2021, it brought in 10 grand for me, completely passive. Like, thank God for that. The last portion of my business is what you guys know. It's why I'm here. It's the Rebecca, the reseller brand if you will. <laughs> my YouTube channel, my Instagram presence, the fact that I am a person on social media in the reselling community. I'm not one of the big ones. We all know that. That's fine with me. That's the discussion for another day. But it is a portion of my business. It is a part of my business. And I'm very grateful and very excited for this part of my business because it's where I get to connect with all of you. It's where I get to think of you. Like when I do a video, I'm thinking of how I'm going to communicate things to you, what I'm going to share with you, how I'm going to share it, what you are struggling with and want to know from me, what I can teach and share and explore with you and communicate with you in the comments or on Instagram with DMs and comments there. And then an extension of that is the course that I made and the reseller products that I have and how I've shared those with you as well. So I know people get kind of a little bit kooky about YouTube, making money off of other resellers, your course, this, 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 whatever, get over it. <laughs> like that's all I have to say, whatever, get over it. Because people that do this, and I'm not one of the big ones. We've seen several videos out now from several larger resellers and larger reselling YouTubers that are sharing mega numbers and it's all well-deserved because they put out great videos. They put out a lot of videos. They've been doing it a long time. They've been there consistently. I've learned from them. And if they have information that they want to share in a certain way and someone chooses to buy it, someone else can certainly choose not to buy it. And it's everybody's individual choice. We all learn differently. We all dig different personalities on the internet. And it's all cool. There's room enough for all of us. And if you want to watch, watch. If you want to comment, comment. If you want to follow, follow. If you want to buy the course, buy the course. If you want to buy their product, buy their product. Or don't. It's okay. And no one has to judge anyone else for doing it or not doing it. So I have one more thing to say before I get into these numbers, and it's about courses and products and things like that. I've been thinking about it because there is a little bit of like angst and 
talk in the community about people that have a product and sell a product to other resellers or make money off of other resellers and teaching information and sharing information. And as one of those people, even though I'm not one of the largest people, as one of those people, I thought about it like this. Is anyone mad at a math teacher because they decided to be a math teacher and not a mathematician? Like, is anybody mad at those? <laughs> like, are you mad? Like, if you have a teacher in your family and they teach math, are you pissed at them because they decided to make money as a math teacher and not as an actual mathematician? That's kind of what we're saying. We're saying we're mad at you because you're not making that much money as a reseller, but you're making money as a reselling teacher or that you've chosen to make money as a reselling teacher in addition to being a reseller. To me, that's bonkers. <laughs> so I am happy that I'm one of those people that feels compelled to share what I know. And I don't know everything, but what I do know, I share. And what's amazing and what I've learned on YouTube is that there are people that it would never occur to them what I know and vice versa. That's why I watch other YouTubers because what they know would never occur to me. We're all different. Our minds work differently. We learn differently. We share differently. Like it, there's no reason to judge any of it. And so I really feel strongly that this needs to start cracking in the community. I think by people putting out their videos this year and really sharing how much they're making, not only from reselling, but from YouTube, from affiliates, from courses, from products, whatever, sponsorships, etc. we can all kind of understand that some of us just want to be resellers and that's okay. And some of us want to be resellers and reselling teachers, influencers, sharers, whatever you want to call it. And that's okay too. And so we can all do what we want and it's all good. Sorry for the ramble and the rant. I actually wasn't planning on doing that in this video, but it just kind of came out and so it is what it is. So let's talk about Rebecca the reseller. So that's my social media brand. That's my what I put out there to you guys on YouTube from AdSense. Ready for it? Oh my God, it's amazing. $2,013.43. So no, it's not $100,000. Could you guess it? I have hmm, 4,000 subscribers and you know, my view, my, my channel has like just passed 200,000 views. And so by no stretch of the imagination, am I making bajillions of dollars from YouTube AdSense? No, I am not. And that's okay. It's a little bit of a bummer because it does take a lot of time and effort to make the videos. I'm getting better at editing. I'm getting better at doing different things with my videos. So they're more entertaining for you guys. And I'm really going to try and treat YouTube more as a part of my job where before it was just kind of an extra bonus thing and now I want to treat it more as part of my job and I think that will communicate to you and hopefully then I will be rewarded with that in 2021 with a little bit of more monetary compensation but I usually average anywhere between 150 and 300 dollars <laughs> a month in revenue from AdSense so it's not a ton of money but the great thing about this YouTube channel and the Instagram community that I have, which is about 14,000 followers, and I'm appreciative for each and every one of you that tune in to wonder what I have to say or find any of my tips helpful or get entertainment out of it or you know, camaraderie when you're doing your work or whatever you tune in for, whether it's to get information, just to hang out and have a reseller buddy or whatever it is, I appreciate it. And I don't take it for granted. I really do think about you guys all the time. And so I, I do appreciate it. That $2,000, it's a bummer because of the time and effort that you put in, but it's not a bummer in that, oh, I only make this amount of money. Like I'm upset. Like I enjoy all of this and that's why I keep doing it despite the fact <laughs> don't make that much on AdSense. But the other parts that come along with having a social media presence, so a YouTube and an Instagram, because that's primarily where I am, I have an Etsy store 
that I kind of drive traffic to. You guys know I mention it all the time. Sorry if I'm so salesy, but I want to let you know that I have all of these reseller tools that I made for my business, and now I'm making them available to you. My spreadsheets, my trackers, my closet signs, my ebook. What else do I have in there? Oh my God, like so many things. And oh, my keywords list and my listing forms and all of that stuff. So in the year I did in sales in that Etsy store for Rebecca the reseller, $3,874.44. So to me, that's cool because if it weren't for my channel and if it weren't for my Instagram and doing social media, you wouldn't care about my products and you wouldn't know about my products and probably I wouldn't have even done them for you. So I would have done them for me because I made them for my business, but I wouldn't have shared them and made them available. So having those out there and having them be purchased by you guys is an extension of the channel. So even though I only made 2000 on YouTube AdSense, I made almost 4000 from the Etsy store, which is great. So, and that is digital downloads. So it pretty much is passive income once the, once the listing is created and once the product is created, it becomes passive income, which is really wonderful and really got me through this year in so many ways. The other portion of having a YouTube channel and Instagram, you've heard it from a lot of other people's videos. They have shared their Amazon affiliate income and it's so funny because when I watch them, like I watched Becky Park's video, I watched Nicole State's video, Rally Roots, like I watched every Lori Tata's video. Who else? Who else? I, I watched all of them. Like everybody's video that came out that shared about how much they made and their income and all of that. I watched them because I find it fascinating. I'm still completely befuddled that we're all able to make this money on the interwebs. Anyway, they're making like thousands of dollars from Amazon affiliates and I'm so happy for them. So happy for them. You guys are going to die when you hear this. I made $187.66. Like it's a total funny thing because again, their channels are bigger. So they're going to have more people watching. And so those people are going to check their descriptions and order from their links. Like it makes total sense. I am happy for them. I am all props to them. But I just think it's funny that it's such a little number for the entire year. Like I get excited in December. My payout was $38 and I was like, wow. <laughs> so if you ever need to order something from Amazon, order it through one of my links if you don't mind and make me feel better for the day. But yeah, no, I mean, I'm going to do some things to grow it in the future this year. There are some products that I feel strongly about recommending that have really been helpful to me and I just really never put a whole lot into it. So in 2021, I do feel like some of the content that I do is going to be sharing, explaining, reviewing some of the products and I think that will help with that particular stream of income. But there's so many of us resellers and a lot of the times we're all all recommending the same products and so like it is what it is it's no no big deal but I just thought that was funny because when I hear each one of their videos it's like ten thousand dollars <laughs> hundred and eighty seven dollars anyway so one thing that I have that I'll share with you that I didn't hear on many videos is reseller chats I'm the only one that calls them reseller chats, I think. A lot of people do offer coaching and mentoring and consulting and all of these things. And I felt really strongly that I did not want it to be so formal, weighted with like, I'm here to teach you this and this and this, because I really sometimes just want a reseller friend to talk to and I felt like when someone's new at this and they want some advice but sometimes they just want a sounding board like they just want to say hey what do you think about this it's like the coworker in the cubicle next to you that you talk about the boss with right like so if you want to schedule a reseller chat and talk about what are some things that you should be focusing on sourcing or what do your photos look like in comparison or what are some extra sales strategies that you you can do on Poshmark or how can you navigate thread up now that everything has changed like if you want to have a conversation I'm like I'm gonna do that and so I've actually had a bunch of reseller chats this year with several people one of them in particular has gone on for several weeks and so you could I guess call that coaching but we're not we're just calling it reseller chats and that's linked down below too I made $416 doing that I have to tell you obviously that's a trade time for money thing so it is hard you can't do that many of them but the ones that I have done have 
been wonderful and I enjoyed it and I think the people that I did them with got something out of it to help them with their business or at least to help save them time and looking in all the places for the information like you could have one call find out everything you need to know about Poshmark boutiques or selling on ThreadUp or Poshmark selling strategies or time management as a reselling mom whatever you want to chat about that's what we can focus on and my plan is to give you actionable tips so that you're not wasting your money but you are condensing and being very efficient with your time and money so that was that not a lot but it was really a great um, addition to the business this year the next thing is the Poshmark boutique course if you don't know I created a Poshmark course all about running a successful boutique and how to use that to scale up your business and free up your time I love a good multiple quantity listing I've made tens of thousands of dollars at this point with my Poshmark boutique and I have learned a lot about how to source where to source when to source what to source all of the tips and tricks and nitty-gritty around it I share everything that I know and it's in a condensed course and I had launched it at several different prices and now it is just $47 it's on teachable you can have it for the lifetime you can go through it self paced it's linked down below and with that I have now over 75 students and I made a total of two thousand nine hundred and twenty two dollars and sixty two cents with that and I thought that was fantastic um, it was my very first course I was really excited about it we're putting it together once which again when it's your first time it's gonna take you longer but now that I've gone through the process I could totally do the next one more efficiently and I would love to do one or two more in 2021 that course really taught me a lot as well and the people that have taken it have enjoyed it they've given me good feedback they've asked a ton more questions it was a really great experience for me and I hope it was a really great experience for those of you that purchased it again thank you so much I do appreciate it it just gave me another avenue to explore am I gonna keep doing that for forever I don't know but I do really feel strongly that courses I've taken four or five courses I bought Mogi Beth's course I bought all of Chriselle's courses I bought uh, Nancy Badillo's course about printables there's a couple that I'm thinking about that I haven't actually pulled the trigger on yet that I may purchase that are out there but yeah I really find that courses if they're a good course and if you trust the person that's making the course that it will be a good course is a really great way to learn so I'm all about it the last area of Rebecca the reseller is is other affiliates so you've heard about this now from other people like I'm an affiliate for Vendu I'm an affiliate for Canva I'm an affiliate for other courses and dashboards and all kinds of things that I use recommend to you and get a little kickback for when you sign up through my code or link really the main portion of this has been recommending courses Chriselle's thread up course specifically and what a blessing that was finding her finding her course learning how to use it for myself or thread up and making ten thousand dollars you know basically from thread up but then also signing up as an affiliate because I made four thousand seven hundred and fifty eight dollars from other affiliate sources and so that wasn't just hers it was other courses and Vendu as well I was really grateful for having found that income stream because that filled the void during the height of the pandemic when I wasn't able to resell as much or I wasn't able to YouTube as much because of homeschooling geo during the pandemic etc and that's why I'm a big believer of having multiple streams of income this year is the reason why because one goes up one goes down one gets annihilated and one comes through out of nowhere that you never knew even existed so I really think if you are someone that is considering constructing a business that is multi-passionate um, like mine you want to consider different kinds of things reselling social media print on demand they feed into each other but they're also different enough where one can go up while the other one goes down and that's really cool so let's go into the total numbers and how much I paid myself and all of that good stuff Rebecca the reseller total brought in fourteen thousand dollars fourteen thousand one hundred and seventy three dollars Wow <laughs> so just from putting myself out there on the interwebs it resulted in fourteen thousand one hundred and seventy three dollars and that's amazing I mean just me sitting here talking to you guys sharing what I've learned sharing my journey sharing what I know recommending things to you helping you when you need it answering your questions responding to your comments all of that which I enjoy doing so much resulted in fourteen thousand dollars and I'm really grateful grateful for that and I'm almost more grateful for that than the other stuff because that's you and me <laughs> like that's you know people helping each other and people sharing and I 
just think it's really cool. So thank you for having participated in any way by watching these videos and liking and subscribing and all of that good stuff. I really, really do appreciate it. And I hope that it does show you that there are lots of different ways to utilize social media to make money. Because like I said at the beginning of talking about this, I only made $2,000 from YouTube. But because I do YouTube, I was able to do other things. And so I'm not, you know, making $10,000 a month on YouTube. But because of it, I was able to explore these other areas that also bring me joy, that also utilize my talents in sharing information and products and tools and whatever. And that is also meaningful. And it also brings value to you. For everyone that's bought one of my listing forms or keywords lists or trackers, that's helpful to you in your business. It was an exchange of value. It wasn't like you just gave me money because you like me. <laughs> you know, it was I gave you a product and you gave me money for it. So it was value to both of us. And so I feel like that's really cool. So the grand total of revenue for 2020 from all three of those streams was $73,920.41. <sighs> Amazing. Like almost almost there. Next year, I will be a six-figure seller. Next year, or maybe not a seller, because I don't know if I'll go from 50000 in reselling to a six-figure seller, but I will have a six-figure business next year. That will happen. Like, I'm, it, I wanted it to be this year. It didn't happen. But next year, I will be a six-figure business, and that is beyond because I started this when Gio was six months old by taking pictures of other people's baby clothes and his baby clothes and selling them on the internet. Like that's where this all started and I just can't believe it. Talk about the numbers. So $73,920.41, that's the total revenue for the business. So reselling was 50,000 of that. So that was 69% of my business. So reselling is the bulk of my business, over two thirds. Print on demand, the shirts on Amazon, things like that, that was 13% of my business, so just a small chunk. And then Rebecca the reseller was 19% of my business, which I think is pretty cool and could clearly grow that and the print on demand higher and potentially make reselling go lower because reselling is the most time consuming of it um, and also the most expensive. It has the most expenses attached to it. So if I can kind of even this out to where maybe print on demand is 25%, Rebecca the reseller is 25%, and then reselling is 50%, I would like that makeup a lot more. So we'll see how that goes. In 2019, last year, I did $73,624. So this year, I beat last year by $300. <laughs> I posted this on Instagram. Instagram that I was close to making, you know, to being able to potentially hit beyond because you want to grow year over year. That's very important to me. I'm all about improving and I wanted to improve this year, even though everything was stacked against me, right? Like homeschooling, pandemic, this, can't go to thrift stores, all this stuff. I was still able to beat last year got rid of my storage unit, got rid of my virtual assistant, like everything came crashing down and I was still able to beat last year by $300. So I'm really, I'm really excited. I'm really proud of myself for that. Now, just to talk to you a little bit about how much I paid myself and actual earnings, because right now what I'm talking about is the business. So the business made $73,000. Then there were all these expenses. And I will tell you, I didn't have time to go through and figure out all of the expenses. They are in there. They're tracked in several different spreadsheets. And I just didn't have time to get to that. But I figured what you guys want to know is what did you make and what did you take home? Like that's the main part. So I will tell you in 2019, I didn't pay myself anything. I put everything back into the business. And so this year it was very important to me to pay myself a small but steady amount of money. So every month I paid myself a thousand dollars. That's how much I put into my personal bank account. Everything else has been in my business bank account. And so I paid myself $1,000 per month. And that's what I knew I could count on. And I went off of a percentage strategy of how much to pay myself. And I go through that in my reseller finances video. It's all based on the book profit first, and it changed how I run my business. So if you are curious about how to pay yourself, what to pay yourself and kind of how to handle all your business bank account and how to 
pay yourself, I would go and check out that video on my channel. Just search reseller finances, Rebecca the reseller, and it will come up and I go through everything in detail. The system that I set up for myself was to pay a low monthly salary consistently every month and then set up a quarterly and biannually bonuses. The first quarter, I did not give myself any bonuses because the pandemic was just happening around the end of that quarter and I was scared and didn't know what would happen. So I forego, for gone, for go, for goo, I don't know, didn't give myself a bonus. Q2, I did the same thing because everything was looking better, but I wasn't 100%. I didn't know what was going to happen. So Q1 and Q2, I purposefully did not pay myself any bonuses. But Q3, I paid myself my first bonus of 2020, which I think I shared on social media, was $1,573. And that's basically taking everything that I put in my profit business bank account, splitting it to keep half of it into the business and half of it paid out as a bonus. So that was $1,573 that I paid myself in September. And then Q4, which I just paid myself, um, I was able to pay out two bonuses. One was my salary bonus. So everything that I accumulated in my salary bank account that was beyond my thousand dollars, I kept in there just in case there was a month where I couldn't pay myself my thousand, but I wanted to keep getting my consistent thousand. So I was able to then dip from that if I needed it, but I didn't need to. So in Q4, I paid myself $3,749 in that bonus. And then my quarterly profit bonus, which was the same like I did previously, that was $1,956. And so on the 31st of December, 2020, I paid myself $5,705. So I have 1,000 a month for 12 months. That's 12,000. Then I have my Q4 bonuses of 5,700. So that's a total of, oh, and then the Q3 bonus. So the total of bonuses was $7,278. So 12,000 for salary. 7,000 for bonuses puts you at just shy of 20,000. Now, I will tell you, I save 15% of everything that I do for my taxes. And I put that in a separate bank account. And that's all for taxes. Again, I go through this in my reseller finances video. And so that money is there. Currently, I have $9,000 in that account. And so when my husband and I go to do our taxes, I will find out what my business tax liability is. And I will pay for it out of that account. Anything that's left over because of all the deductions that I get to take, that becomes a bonus paid out to me. I'm figuring that I should probably have about $5,000 that would be paid out to me. I don't know. I'm estimating. If I'm able to pay myself that $5,000, that would bring my total paying myself money to $24,278. So basically, I will have paid myself in 2020 as a result of the bonuses, the tax bonus, and the salary $25,000 from, that's what I paid myself from the business, and off of annual sales of 73,000, 32.8%. And so I just kind of rounded it to 33%. So basically a third of my annual sales I made personally, which I think is pretty good. I don't know in comparison, I didn't hear that from most people that did these videos about like, do they make half? Do they make 30%? Do they make 20%? Whatever. For next year, I would like to pay myself more in salary and less in bonuses so that my salary on a monthly basis can be more money and I'm not just waiting till the quarter to get the bonus. Honestly, it really doesn't matter, but I would just like to feel like I'm paying myself more monthly than a thousand dollars. It seems like, you know, wasn't that much. What I was able to do with that money this year, I do want to share with you is that I was able to fully fund my IRA. I was able to top off my savings account because I'm trying to save for a big trip and I'm trying to save for a car because pretty soon I'll need a car. So I was able to put about $10,000 in my savings account. And so I saved a bulk of the money that I made this year. And that's because my husband is the primary breadwinner. I'm a stay at home mom. This is my business. And so we don't rely on this to pay our bills, but this is going to start now that it is making more consistent income, be a bigger player in our financial picture before we couldn't really count on it. And now I feel like I've built it over the last four years to where we can count on it. I'm paying myself a regular salary. I'm paying myself bonuses and all the money is in the business. And then I pay it out to myself. I'm no longer putting money into the business. The business is now paying me and sustaining itself. And that's what a business is all about. So if you are not in that place, 
that's completely fine, of course. But and if that's not where you want to get to, that's fine, of course. But if that is something that you want to get to, you have to start thinking about how you're handling your money, where that money is, what are you doing with it, and are you treating it like business money or your own play money. So just a couple of thoughts there. And for those of you that have been watching the channel, you'll know I have been kind of on this road of four ways to 4K, which is supposed to be a thousand dollars a month from each of four income streams so that I could bring home four thousand dollars a month in salary. And so I'm not there yet yet, but I'm almost there. And so I'm really pleased that I was able to do about $25,000 in salary, which is about halfway to my goal. And that was with Gio being home and homeschooling. So when he is in school and next year when he's in kindergarten, which is my goal to get that amount of salary coming in by the time he's in kin or by the time he's done with his kindergarten year, which would be the end of next year, I should be able to do it. So 2020 was a crazy, crazy year, but I was able to make a consistent consistent, substantial income compared to years past. And I'm grateful for that company, that connection that I've made with you, that community that I'm part of in the reselling community, and all of what made up this business on the internet this year. And I hope that you found this information helpful. I hope that it inspires you to continue to improve whatever you're doing if you feel like you need it. Um, or just to know that there's another person out there that's making similar to what you're making or more than what you're making or less than what you're making or whatever. I think it's just great for us to connect and share. And I thank you for watching up until this point. If you have, I hope you will subscribe to the channel, like this video on your way out, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much. I hope you had a wonderful 2020 and I wish you all the best in 2021. Bye.